A romantic ride in an Italian gondola may be a thing of the past. The water levels in the legendary canals of Venice, Italy have dropped to record lows. According to Venice's local tide monitoring authority, the water is 2.16 feet below average, with some canals running dry. The city of Venice is made up of 118 small islands connected by bridges and canals. Locals and tourists travel by gondola and boat through different parts of this UNESCO World Heritage Site. Severe drought and record high temperatures over the summer, combined with the Alps receiving less than half of its normal snowfall this year, have resulted in some Venetian canals not having enough water to float a boat. Water ambulances have reportedly had difficulty reaching patients. Beyond the environmental concerns, some worry this may have an effect on summer 2023 tourism, dashing the dreams of those who want to glide along Venice's canals and the businesses who want their money. For I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakak Badash, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Ruel, and peace and salutations to the elect, and much respect to the brothers pushing this word in the four winds of the earth. And, um, yeah, you see that all of these rivers are, are drying up, man. Even over there in Italy, as you see, you know, the rivers are dry, drying up. And there's four rivers over here that's drying up, okay? And it says, as ri rivers around the world dry up, people are taking notice. Some of these rivers have long been known for their beauty and recreational activities, but with significantly less water flowing through them. It's hard to maintain those attractions, right? And they worry about an attraction, but, you know, not worrying that, you know, this is really means a, a famine is coming, man. It says in some cases, dried up riverbeds can even cause problems with infrastructure and fishermen, farmers, right? And even entire cities rely on these natural waterways for uh, sustenance and income. Unfortunately, due to a variety of factors, including climate change and pollution and over-extraction of water resources, many rivers are in danger of drying up. And it says, here are the four rivers around the U.S. that are at risk of disappearing. You got the Colorado River here. Okay, and I'm not going to read the synopsis on that. The Mississippi River. And uh, the Snake River. And uh, let me see here. And the Mobile River. Right? So these are four rivers, four great rivers in the United States that are drying up, man. Okay? And I would say three out of the four of these places, you know, a lot of produce is grown and, you know, the water is needed to, uh, you know, keep the land fertile and, you know, be able to, uh, you know, grow your fruits and your vegetables and, and stuff on, on the land, man. Now, with these waters drying up, that's pointing to famine, man, which is, is coming. Right? And there was another one. Uh, Let me see here. Give me a second. Okay, so this is another article and it says the Omega symbol appears in the Euphrates River because the Euphrates River is, uh, you know, one of the four great rivers in the Bible. And, um, the Euphrates River is drying up now. It's dried up so much to the point where, you know, you can see the land under the water. And this is the, the Omega sign that they saw in one part of the uh, Euphrates River that's uh, completely dried up, as you can see, man. You know? So this is the uh, Omega symbol right here, right? Which is right here. The Omega symbol, Right? And what does uh, the Omega symbol uh, represent? It represents the end, man. All right, and let's get that in uh, uh, Revelation 1 and 8, I believe. 
Okay. This is Revelation uh, 1 and 8. It says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Okay? So the Alpha is the beginning and the Omega is the ending. And this symbol right here represents that we are definitely in the end times. This is another sign from the Heavenly Father, you know, to let us know, you know, what times we're in, man. So we're definitely in, in the end times now, man, right? And uh, a famine is, is definitely coming, right? So I had another uh, article I wanted to bring out. Um, just one more article. Which caught my eye because this definitely is pointing to, you know, a famine as well. In my eyes, anyway. And it says, wildlife officials want you to catch and cook fat and juicy invasive species in Utah. Man, these are uh, these are frog legs, man, which I've never tasted before. <laughs> if any of y'all ever seen Norbert, that's what it remind me of the turkey ass. <laughs> this is disgusting. I don't see how people can eat this. It's disgusting. It says, uh, catch and cook this fat and juicy invasive species in Utah. And you won't be and you won't be eating good. And you won't just be eating good. You'll be helping the environment at the same time. Right? Now look how these things look, man. These is all bullfrogs, man. I mean, I don't see how people could eat that shit, man. That looks disgusting. You know? But now they're they're going towards telling people, you know, we're gonna be uh putting bugs in the food and I showed you in another uh, article where people in uh, in New York City were catching rodents and um, and grilling them and eating them, and now this man, right? And it's gonna come to the point where <laughs> people are literally gonna have to be living off the land, as far as you know, catching anything they can to eat, man. You know, that's where it's going to, you know. You know, us being, uh, you know, of the Lord, we're not going to be doing that, Lord willing. You know, we're going to wait and trust on the Lord. But uh, the majority of these people out here are going to be eating things that they never thought that they would eat before, man. Right? The scriptures say that the land will be barren of faith. Okay? And for the most part, the land which we are living in now, which is uh, Babylon the Great, a.k.a. America, is definitely barren of faith. But more so in those days, man, when the famine hits, man, you know, so that's what I took from this here. They trying to, you know, you know how Esau works with gradualism. So they gradually, you know, put these things on the masses so that they, uh, you know, get accustomed to it and then start doing it, man. Right. So this is another thing that Esau wants uh, the people of America to do. Right. Is to eat frogs. Right. And eat bugs. Right. And they also try to pass, uh, you know, ca uh, cannibalism to a point which I brought out in another um, video, which is definitely going to be uh, a very much prevalent soon come, man. You know, people are going to be, uh, you know, eating each other as well, man. These things are definitely coming here in America, man. So I wanted to bring out a couple of scriptures and uh, Lord willing. Uh, this lesson is edifying. I wanted to go to, uh, let's go to 2nd Ezra 16. Let's get 17 through 19. And it says, woe is me, woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? It says, the beginning of sorrows and great mournings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Right? Trust in the Lord. You know, that's what we're going to do. We're going to trust in the Lord, man. And it says, Behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. Right? And these things are definitely coming, man. They're coming faster and faster, man. You know? 
And, and these things can come overnight, man, without notice. You know, one day everything could be good. And then when you wake up the next day, everything will be not so good. You know, and that's how how, how these things work, man. You know, so we're, we're, we're on our watch and we're watching for these things because we know we know that they're coming. And this is why we always make videos on these things, because uh, these are the last prophecies that we are waiting to uh, pop off. So we're keeping a watchful eye on them because we know that they're coming. So we're just trying to alert, you know, the body and people uh, that these things are coming, man, you know. Let me get that in the uh, New Living Translation. What the hell? Second address uh, 16. Let's start at uh, 16. It says, uh, Second Edris, uh 16 and 16. It says, The disasters are on their way toward the earth, and like an arrow shot by a strong archer, they cannot be turned back. I'm doomed. I'm doomed. Who will rescue me in those days? It says, Troubles will come, and many people will groan. Famine will come, and many will die. Wars will come, and the world powers will uh, tremble. It says disasters will come, and every one will be terrified. What people, what will people do when these disasters come? Right, the famines, the epidemics, troubles, and suffering are sent to punish and correct people. Right. And it also says, but in spite of all this, they will not turn away from their sins. They soon forgot their punishment, right? It says, the, the time is coming when food will be so cheap that people will think a time of peace and plenty has arrived, but then disasters will spring up everywhere, wars, famine, and great confusion, right? Yeah, so they're just going to, like I said, uh, one day... Everything could be all good, man. And you wake up the next day, and it's not going to be so good, man. And it says, uh, many, uh, verse 22, many people on earth will starve to death, and those who escape starvation will be killed in war, right? And that's what's coming on the earth, man. A lot, of, a lot of starvation. Now, a famine doesn't mean that there's no food, but it definitely means that, you know, is be like a, a rationing of food where, you know, most people won't get enough uh, to survive if they do get some food at all, because there'll be some that won't have access to food at all. And there'll be some that have access to food, but not enough to nourish the body, man. You know, and as we know, the elites will have uh, bunkers and bunkers of food. Right. But. Little do they know that they pretty much storing that up for the elect so that the elect can eat, you know, the men of the Lord. All right. Let me get a uh, second. Edge. Let me get uh, 16 and 37 through 39. I'll just stay here. In second address. Uh, it says the disasters are approaching rapidly and they will not be delayed. It says a woman in the ninth month of pregnancy may suffer labor pains for several hours, but when it, when the time comes for the baby to be born, there is no longer any delay. In the same way, the disasters that are coming on the earth will not be delayed. And the world will groan when it is caught and it's labor pains, right? And that's definitely what's coming, man. You know, we can see it, man. All of these rivers drying up at the same time. You know, Esau uh, causing these uh, derailments of trains and chemicals to be spilled in the water, right? You know, killing the livestock and, you know, 
making people sick, you know, making the food uh, not, you know, unedible, if that's a word, right? Or making the food not edible anymore. You know, all these things are coming in place, man. You know, that famine is, is fastly approaching, man. You know, World War III is in, is in the workings right now. You know, we're seeing chariots all over the skies. You know, I just put up another video up on my other page last night. I'm going to put it up on this page, but it'll probably be later on this week because I came into some more footage of, of, of uh, chariots that is amazing. And, um, yeah, all of these things are happening, man. So we're definitely at the end, right? And that Omega, I mean, that uh, Omega sign in Euphrates River is just the cherry on top, man. That definitely lets us know that we at the end. So, yeah, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to say shalom to the next one.